the universe looked ablaze. Gas and oil screamed from 750 holes, dynamited and torched by a losing army. The magnitude of the disaster had no parallel. Iraq set fire or damaged 85% of Kuwait's 900 oil wells. Kuwait, which produced one and a half million barrels of oil a day before the war, in March of 1991, could produce none. Some experts predicted the fires would burn for five years. Others said three. Only optimists dared to venture two years. No matter how long, extinguishing the fires would require superb organizational skill and management. Each day the fires burn, $120 million went up in smoke. An anxious world worried about the millions of tons of pollution. There were predictions of a nuclear winter and unknown health problems. An army of workers must be mobilized, organized, supplied and directed. That army needed housing, food, transportation, workspace, communications equipment and medical facilities. Tons of special equipment must be procured under extreme conditions. The Kuwait oil company turned to Bechtel to impose reason onto chaos. Bechtel's first crew arrived March 3rd, following the sound of gunshots into Kuwait City. The first engineers to arrive found no services, no water, no power, no food, no phones. In the oil fields, there were wrecked buildings, no maps, no computers, no desks, no chairs, no copiers, not even paper or pencils. So 550 miles south of Kuwait, procurement specialists set up shop at Jebel Ali in the United Arab Emirates. Three people on March 3rd became a few hundred by the end of March, a few thousand by mid-spring, and 10,000 by September. A team of hundreds organized the biggest airlift of equipment since the Berlin airlift, 200,000 tons of supplies. Ships arrived with heavy equipment. In the fire fields, crews got desperately needed machinery. Within months, procurement teams located, contracted for, shipped, and unloaded the largest fleet of equipment operating anywhere in the world, 6,000 pieces of construction equipment and vehicles. Fires could not be fought without equipment, but water is the currency of fire suppression, lots of it. One well fire may suck up to a million gallons in two hours. Yet Kuwait is desert. The problem was how to get a flood of water out of the desert to hundreds of different well fires. Field engineers devised a scheme. Since pipelines pumped oil out to the Arabian Gulf, they reasoned why not reverse the process and pump water from the Gulf to the fires. It was fast, effective, economical, and startlingly simple. That single innovative idea to reverse the flow lines would save Kuwait billions of dollars. As more equipment poured in, more firefighting crews mobilized. Among them was a highly successful national firefighting team from Kuwait. The fire kill rate went from one every week or ten days to two a week. Then to four a week. And eventually to two a day. 
There were close calls. A bulldozer and operator nearly fell into the flames. The operator escaped unharmed. And even after they were capped, some wells were so badly damaged they could blow at any time and the oil gushers had to be restarted. Because of the danger, safety was a priority, and despite the risks, not a single firefighter lost his life. The heroism of the firefighters was seen and admired by the world, but behind them, Thousands of support workers from 34 countries prepared their way. Managers coordinating the work put in a 70-hour week minimum. Most coordinators worked more. Some had to be counseled not to work too much. And on the front lines, weary firefighters up at 4 a.m. often refused to leave a well at dusk if they thought they could cap it, and instead worked long into the night. By late spring, Experience organizing and managing complex jobs paid dividends. Support crews moved several days ahead of fire teams. Everything was prepared when they arrived. Crews bulldozed access roads, dug lagoons, pumped water, and cleared the area of bombs and explosives left from battle so firefighters could go straight to work. By late summer, crews killed 52 fires in one week and 13 fires on a single day. The last fire was Sabria 48. On November 6, the Canadian company Safety Boss prepared the assault. They had been working this fire for nearly two weeks. This morning, their attack worked. Dry chemical, mostly potassium, suffocated them and knocked it down. At 10.16 a.m., November 6th, the last flames in Kuwait died. Heroism and hard work combined to turn an unprecedented disaster into an unequaled accomplishment. The ingenuity the innovation, the management skills, and the sweat saved Kuwait tens of billions of dollars in resources and spared the world from millions of tons of additional pollution, additional damage to the environment and to people. Whatever Saddam Hussein dreamed, whatever some experts feared, did not come true. Through multinational teamwork, the fires were out, not in five years in eight months.